Great. Um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the District 1 uh, Public Works Integrating Committee State uh, Infrastructure Programs Applicant Workshop. Um, I'm just going to do some introductions and meeting process uh, minutes while people are still um, getting admitted. Thank you for joining us virtually. This meeting is also being recorded and will be posted on the Cuyahoga County Planning Commission website. So you can watch it over and over and over again um, so you can perfect your applications. So those of you who do not know me, my name is Allison Ball and I am a planner here with Cuyahoga County Planning Commission and I'm also the District 1 liaison. Um, with us today is Jennifer Klein. I'm gonna let her turn on her camera and introduce herself. Hello, sorry, my camera is not working oh. this morning, so I can't do that. Sorry about <laughs> oh, okay. that, that was, <laughs> what's the plan? Um, uh, but yes, I'm Jennifer Klein. I am your District 1 program rep from OPWC. Um, I'll be able to answer all your questions regarding our new portal that we're rolling out in August um, and uh, policy, OPWC policy specific questions. Great. So, and also on the Zoom today is members from the DOPWIC staff and the DOPWIC committee um, has staff members that um, uh, are representative of the different um, membership and we're the evaluation team. So um, you don't have to turn on your cameras, but maybe raise your hands or, 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 or show your camera. But we have um, Ernie Zadell from Cuyahoga County Planning, um, Tony Armano from the city of Berea and Angela Sanchez from the city of Cleveland. And uh, so they may pop in to answer some questions as well. So hi, Ernie, uh, Tony came on and uh, Good morning, everyone. Yeah, so thank you all. Um, now, uh, you can turn on your cameras. There's Tony again, and uh, you can use the chat function if you have questions. Just um, feel free. It is kind of like when I used to do these in person, just very informal. And uh, I'm going to get started with the screen sharing. All right, so if somebody, if you can all see that, you can raise a hand or, or give a nod or a thumbs up or just say something. Everybody Look, can see the I, screen. I can see it. Great, Looks thank good, you. Allison. Thank you very much. All right, so um, here's the agenda for today. We'll give an overview of the state capital improvement programs, the OPWC programs, the District 1 Public Works Integrating Committee, and the funding and eligibility. Then we'll get into the fiscal year 2023 application process. We'll discuss program updates, uh, the application materials, the project evaluation and selection, and then also the small government and emergency programs. And then we'll have time for questions and answers. So Ohio Public Works Commission um, is responsible for this program. So I'm gonna turn this over to Jennifer for a couple slides. Yes, and I'm going to steal the sharing of the screen. Okay. Do I have to stop share? I don't think so. Okay. Did that work? Can you see OPWC's yep. website now? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, so yes, before I get into uh, the different programs, OPWC, uh, the different funding programs, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of our website and our new portal. Uh, so this is the homepage of OPWC's website. Uh, I highly encourage everyone to um, sign up for our email notifications right here. Um, you can sign up for infrastructure or Clean Ohio or both. Um, and this will give you the most up-to-date information. Um, you know, last year we had trouble with our funding with COVID um, and we send out uh, email updates through this um, newsletter. Uh, also on our website, if you go to WorksWise training on the top, 
Uh, this is where you'll get all the information about our new portal. Uh, we have um, training videos about how to uh, apply for, how to enter an application in the new portal. Uh, but most importantly, at the bottom, um, a request a login to the portal. Everyone needs to request a login to the portal in order to apply for the funding. Um, and so this is where you the link you click to get there for a jot form so we get your information and we can get you a username and password. Um, we will go in live in August. So you'll get, if you've already requested one, we have you in the list and you'll get your login information in August. Um, other than that, um, this is the just public facing view of our WorksWise portal. So no one needs a login to view any of these things. So we are going to have all the normal um, reports that you can normally find on our website, like um, loan pay down reports and disbursement reports. Um, they will all be on this public facing uh, website. Uh, currently, it has all of the loan invoices. We are using this platform to pay our loan invoices. Um, and you do not need a login to do that. Um, you can go to this web page through our website and find your loan invoice to pay directly on this website. Um, and eventually, you'll be able to view all of the open projects and all the reports that you normally can find on my website. This, this is a view of what you will see when you log in. Um, this is just a dummy account. Um, but when you log into your account, you will see this is your home view. You will see all of your applications down here, and you can filter it. Um, this has more filters than you will see. Um, but you can filter it by grants or by loans or by applications not submitted, um, things like that. Um, so you'll have your open projects that you can manage in here and new applications that you have not submitted yet and you're working on getting all the information in. Um, once you do submit and have an approved application project, it will be in here. And this is also where you will go to request a disbursement. Um, you'll just go into that specific project. Um, it'll have your you know, your grant request here and all of the financial information. And then at the top is where you go to submit a disbursement request. Um, also on this general homepage is where you, right here at the top, you can start a new infrastructure application or you can just hit new right here and that will allow you to start a new application. Um, there's also a cloned feature. If you have an old application that didn't get funded, you can go into it and clone it so you don't have to enter as much information. Um, those are some of the highlights of the features. Uh, but again, I encourage you to go to our website and watch this training video on how to, uh, how to submit the application in the portal. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, email me. Uh, we also have a customer service uh, email address, workswise at pwc.ohio.gov. Um, so that's all I wanted to screen share. Um, so we can go back to Allison's um, PowerPoint and I'll walk through uh, the different funding programs. Uh, so yes, first is the State Capital Improvement Program. Um, that's the most common one. People call it issue one money, issue two money. Um, it is from uh, bond obligations. It can be grant or loan funding. Um, there is a, the district allocation has a minimum 10%, a minimum 10% of skip funding must be given out in the form of a loan. Um, the rest can be grant. Um, the other loan option is the revolving loan program. Um, so. OPWC has been around for 35 years and we've given out lots of skip loans. And as those loans get repaid back, um, those loan repayments turn into the revolving loan program. Um, so the district has two different pots of loan money. They can't be combined together. Um, they have to be, they are separate um, pots of money. Um, 
but both eligible and have the same requirements. They fall under that skip umbrella that you can request up to um, with a loan. You can request up to 100% funding through a loan. But if you request a grant, you can request up to 90% of your project funded with a skip grant if it is repair and replace and only 50% of the project if it is new expansion. Um, the other grant pot of money we have is the Local Transportation Improvement Program. Uh, this is a grant program that only funds roads and bridges. Uh, it's based on, uh, the funding comes from part of the gasoline tax. Um, so with the skip funding, you can do roads and bridges, but also water, wastewater, um, solid waste, stormwater. Uh, but the LTIP funding is exclusively for roads and bridges. Um, and you are allowed to request up to 100% of 100% of your project can come from LTIP funding um, legally as what's written in the ORC. But competitively, you probably want to uh, have some local share, but we'll get into that later on. Um, next slide. Uh, so under that skip umbrella of funding, before we hand out the allocations to all the districts, um, there's two things that come off the top is the small government. Um, so there's a small government commission that all um, villages and townships with populations of 5,000 or less are eligible for small government money. So you have to apply at your district level, not get funded at your district level, and then the district sends their top seven um, small government eligible applications to a statewide competition. The small government program has its own set of methodology. Um, uh, revise your application slightly from what you submitted to the district versus what you submit to uh, the small government commission. Uh, for example, small government does not give out um, grants above I believe it's above 500,000. Um, so you can request more than that at the district level, but then you can revise it um, when you're at the small government level to be competitive. Um, and then the emergency program um, is also comes off the top of SKIP funding. It is um, $12 million. It just got increased to $12 million this um, fiscal year. And that, for those funds, you apply directly to me. Um, and it is for projects with uh, that arise directly out of a catastrophic event. Um, they were un not something that was delayed maintenance, but an unforeseen uh, emergency, like a road slip or something similar. So those are all of the different program options of funding that OPWC offers. Great. So we are District 1, Cuyahoga County. These districts were set up back in the um, 80s when the program first started um, based on uh, the population. The District 1 Public Works Integrating Committee is made up of seven members, and these are the members that will vote to uh, approve the recommendations and send them as recommendations to OPWC. Uh, so there are two representatives from Cuyahoga County, and there are two representatives from the most populous um, municipality, which is the city of Cleveland. There are two representatives that represent the suburban mayors and managers, uh, mayors and city managers association, and that's um, Mayor Sellers and Mayor Kumar. Mayor Sellers is the chair. And then uh, they voted on a private sector representative and Ms. Debbie Berry uh, will be that um, private sector uh, from representing the county since I started saying names is um, the Mr. Michael Dever and Ms. Nicole English and then Ms. Valerie McCall and Mr. Matthew Franz uh, represent the city of Cleveland. So our allocation in district one for fiscal year 2023 totals $29 million. We have the same allocation last year that was based still based on the 2010 census data because the allocation is per capita. So we might see that dip a little bit after the 2020 census numbers are released. Uh, again, the 10% of that uh, is going to loan. 
And then another $5.5 million um, in loans that have been repaid from those skip loans. Just a reminder, we have almost seven plus million dollars in loan, but uh, you can't um, combine the two different loan pots. Uh, so just uh, you can top out at 5.5 or 1.8 million. And then the local transportation improvement program, we have uh, $6,304,500. Uh, so it's a, a lot of money. Now, whoops, whoops, going backward. So to apply applicants skip eligibility, uh, the applicants uh, for the state capital improvement program, which uh, includes roads, bridges, culverts, the sewers, sanitary and storm water supply and distribution, wastewater treatment and solid waste disposal includes the counties cities, villages, townships, sanitary districts, or regional water and sewer districts. One thing to note is in order to apply, you do need to have a subdivision code. Um, so if you do not have a subdivision code, you'll contact Jen right after this meeting and uh, you can uh, find out how to apply for one. I think it's just a letter, um, but I, most of you do have that subdivision code. Same thing with the the local transportation improvement program, uh, you need the subdivision code. The applicant pool is different because this is only funding roads, bridges, and culverts. So it's only the counties, cities, villages, and townships. And again, um, like Jen already said, the repair and replacement projects uh, will be funded up to 90%. And then new and expansion projects get up to 50%. Uh, loans, you can get up to 100%. Um, there's zero percent interest. It um, goes for the useful life. It can't exceed the useful life. I think it's a really great deal. I wish my mortgage was at a zero percent interest. And then there are also debt support programs. The loan assistance um, offers grant funding that pays for the interest on eligible construction projects. And the credit enhancement offers a one-time infusion of funds to enhance an applicant's ability to secure affordable debt. So one thing uh, about the debt support programs, especially that loan assistance, it pays for um, the, Jen might have to remind me, the first year of construction um, on a loan. And uh, if you're applying for that, we need to see the pre-construction, um, the, the pre-construction um, condition of the roads, these are gonna be evaluated before they were fixed and compete against the regular SKIP and LTIP applications. So um, if you don't provide the pre-construction pre pre conditions, um, it's not gonna score well. So I just wanna make sure you're aware of that. So, the SKIP and LTIP eligible costs is, includes the acquisition of right-of-way under easements, engineering and design, construction, equipment, and related financing costs, permits, advertising, legal. Um, OPWC does not fund projects that are solely engineering and design. According to the ORC, this uh, the projects that get funded have to have a useful life, um, and there is uh, um, no useful life for just plain uh, the engineering and design uh, portion. So uh, we're gonna move on to the district one state infrastructure programs for fiscal year 2023. Does anybody have any questions about the basic overview? Anything in the chat? So, nope. All right, moving right along. Um, so, Again, this year is um, new with the WorksWise. This year, District 1, we would like you to do the, the paper PDF and WorkWise. Uh, we still reference some of the line items from the paper PDF, and, and not that you have to submit hard copy, we'll get into that, um, but uh, we will be accepting applications via WorkWise as well as electronic file sharing. Last year, we made you do the Dropbox. This year, whatever file sharing program you usually use is fine. If you just 
make sure you get a confirmation of receipt email from me when you submit it. Um, OPWC documents, required documents must be included in the application in order to be recommended for funding. Um, a lot of times Jen has had to follow up for a cooperative agreement or a resolution of support. Um, the OPWC will not accept incomplete applications for funding. And then the construction um, must be started by June of 2023. And then Jen already did show you a little bit about WorkWise. Jen, do you wanna add anything more here? Um. So yes, most importantly, um, request a login so you can log into the portal to submit your application. Um, uh, like Allison said, she still wants the you to fill out the PDF, and I think that is helpful. Not that the portal is uh, confusing. The portal has the same information that you put in the PDF, but um, I think it could be helpful to fill out the PDF that you're used to doing, so you're not you know, thinking about if you're doing it correctly, fill out the PDF as you normally would, and then have that PDF ready and open the portal, and you'll just enter all the same information. Um, so then by next year, you won't even need the paper PDF. You'll just be comfortable entering it into the portal because it is all the same information. It's in the same order. It should look very similar. Um, you know, we're not asking for anything different. Um, and uh, at the bottom of your application in the portal is where you upload all of the additional attachments, additional attachments that you normally do. So you're authorizing legislation, your CFO certification, um, cooperative agreements, all of those things uh, you will uh, upload to the portal. And in the portal, you will not be able to submit the application um, unless you have all of those documents uploaded. Um, so it'll you, once you upload a document, it'll ask you to, there'll be a list of what is this document? Um, and you'll pick from that list and you'll have to have all of those five or six or however many required documents there are, um, the portal will not let you hit the submit button unless you have designated all of those required documents as being uploaded, uh, including Can Allison we have requires a, the supplement. Question? Yeah, we have a question. I don't know if it's showing up on the screen. Does the city and the consultant both need a login through WorkWise? Um, so that is up to you how you best want to handle it. Um, if all, all project officials will get an email when anything happens in the system. So if your consultant is always the person that fills out the, um, fills out the application and submits the disbursement request, then just the consultant will need uh, the login to WorksWise. There is a uh, letter of authorization that needs to be signed by the city um, you know, if the person that has the login to WorksWise is not an employee of the city, you need to give them this authorization that they are allowed to um, enter information on behalf of the city. Um, so then all the project officials will get email updates about everything that happens. Um, you'll get copies of the applications, you'll get copies of the agreements if you get funded and um, get an agreement. Um, so you won't you don't just being a city official you do not need a login to sign anything um there's no more signing of the application which is why we need the um authorizing legislation submitted with the application that authorizing legislation is what um it gives you permission to submit your application um Will one login work for multiple cities, assuming you have authorization from the cities? So yes, as an as a if you're a consultant working with multiple cities, uh, you will only have one login, and then you will have those multiple those letters of authorizations from every city that you're working with. Um, so when when you log in, you'll start a new application, and you'll have a list of the cities that you have that authorization from. So you pick which city you going to be entering for. Yeah, good question. Great, that would be confusing if you had to keep multiple logins. Yeah, one login so. per person, but 
yeah. yeah. Great. So um, this year, like I said, um, all applications must be submitted via WorkWise, as well as one full digital copy um, through any electronic file sharing program. Uh, this will include the OPWC infrastructure application, the DOPIC application su supplement, and any supporting documentation. So um, one thing about WorkWise that I really like, um, if the applications are due at 4.30 p.m. on Thursday, September 16th, and you try to submit at 4.31, it will not accept it. So I would make sure that you're ready um, long before 4.30 to, to press that button and, and submit it, give it time to travel and everything. So um, it will not be necessarily up to the, the liaison. It's that um, WorkWise is gonna be the one that will accept it or tell you that it's too late. So um, the what we like to see, again, a complete PDF, not sections, just one PDF that we can scroll, scroll through. It would include the OPWC application on top, followed by the DOPWIC application supplement, and then attachments separated by a cover page for authorization and resolutions of support, agreements and letters of support, engineers estimates, certifications and plans, supporting documentation and data for road, bridge, and culverts, supporting documentation and data for sewer, septic, water, and wastewater maps and photos, and then the small government checklist if you're uh, eligible for small government, uh, the small government program. So again, we get 50 plus applications. They are often 80 pages. This might seem a bit, um, Minutia, but again, if we want to be able to find something, make sure your your applications are completed by looking for the agreements and resolutions, you know, the estimates, the, the useful life certifications, etc. We know exactly where to find them. Uh, so the, this is just helpful for the evaluation process and also knowing what you need to submit in. So uh, we'll start with the OPWC application. And again, I will turn that over to Jen. Yes. Uh, so I left this slide the same as it's been in years past, uh, rather than giving you screenshots of the portal. Because like I said, I think um, in case anyone's nervous about using the portal, uh, I think it is very easy. But um, you know, people don't like change. So if you, and especially since you will need to submit the paper or the electronic PDF, um, the slides takes you through the, the, the six page OPWC application. That is the standard application you've seen for years. Um, page one is you fill out your uh, applicant information. Uh, page two, at the top, you fill in your financial information, you get uh, how much it's gonna cost from your engineer's estimate, how much the engineering is going to be. Um, the bottom of page two is your financial resources, how much funding are you asking for the uh, what is your local share, where is that coming from. On page three, you give your project schedule. Uh, like we said earlier, your um, construction must start by June of 23, uh, for projects being submitted this fall. Uh, you will get your agreement in July of 22. So you have one year to start construction by June of 2023. On page four is your project description of your project location and the description of the different components for the project. And this project description is the language that will be put in your project agreement. Um, so we don't need you to copy and paste the engineer's estimate. We need you to tell us in words what you're going to do because the, those words are going to be um, taken and put into your project agreement. On page five, you list the three project officials, um, a CEO, a CFO, and a project manager. Uh, again, the CEO and CFO are not allowed to be the same person, um, but the other ones can, uh, the CEO and project manager are allowed to be the same person, just the CEO and CFO are not allowed uh, and then page six has a list of all your required attachments and your signature. Um, so in the portal, 
there will be uh, nice buttons at the top where you'll edit financial information and then it'll pop up your screen and you'll just enter your financial information and then there'll be another button to edit project schedule and it'll pop up uh, with under view to select your project schedule. So it goes through the same order as it does the PDF. Um, and then at the bottom is where you uh, s upload all of your attachments. The only difference is there is no signature on the online portal. Uh, your authorizing legislation, like I said earlier, is your gives you the authorization to submit the application. Um, next slide goes through, yep, the required attachments. Um, so you need a certified authorizing legislation, a certification of your local match, the certification of loan repayment, if you've asked for a loan, um, the, you set the term in that loan repayment letter, it can be up to 30 years or the useful life of your project, whichever is uh, less. Um, a detailed engineer's estimate with a uh, stamped useful life statement and a cooperative agreement if you have a joint project. Um, yes, and in the portal, so you'll be required to upload those things in the portal. Um, and then you'll also be required to upload the district uh, supplemental sheet. Those will all be required before you are allowed to hit that submit button. All right, um, so then moving on, the next thing is the application supplement. So in each district um, can require supplemental information. And so I'm gonna review what we're looking for in district one and how we evaluate these uh, applications. So um, First of all, the methodology criteria and evaluation points, that's been the same now for a couple of years. Um, and the points are determined based on the OPWC application um, in conjunction with the DOPWIC application supplement and the supporting documentation. So as I go through this, um, I, I've just, we've refined a couple of ways we ask for information, but it, it is all mostly, uh, it is all this, the same point structure and, and same criteria. So uh, we'll start with the primary infrastructure. Applicants must submit one DOPWIC application supplement based on the primary infrastructure project. So the primary infrastructure project or component is based on the reason for the project. So for instance, if you have a road project, you're digging up the road, but you're also going to replace uh, water lines or sewer lines, um, the main reason that you're, well, the road is dug up, I should say, you'll, you're going to add that in. The main reason you're doing it is, is for the road, right? So that's your primary uh, infrastructure. Perhaps you're digging up the road because the sewers or the water lines are bad, and then you're going to have to repave the road. Then the water supply or wastewater or stormwater would be your primary infrastructure. One thing uh, um, to be clear is not to get that confused with the project type. The project type is um, how OPWC identifies a project, and that is always based on the highest financial component for the application supplement, we're evaluating this on what is the driving force behind uh, the need for the funds. Uh, in the application supplement, these are radio buttons. So if you press a uh, bridge and then you decide it's, it's, it's a culvert, it'll, you can't select both. It will only allow you to check one. So secondary infrastructure. We want to know if you are doing any additional infrastructure components, and this will um, get you points later down the line when we look at coordinated infrastructure. You can um, click any and all that apply. This year, we're also asking you to provide a brief description of the work for the secondary infrastructure components. Uh, just a short description. Uh, we were using the engineer's estimates, but sometimes we couldn't really tell what work was being included as secondary. 
And we want to remind you that the catch basins adjusted to grade or stalling under drains with the new curb um, are not considered a separate stormwater project. You need to do that anyway as part of a road project. So again, having you write out what you're doing for your secondary will help you determine if it's truly a secondary infrastructure component. So the project description, um, you already give the location and limits in OPWC. And this is one of the few places where we are a little redundant with this. However, we put this in um, a grid form so we can export it right to Excel um, in order to map out the, the projects. So uh, again, we ask you to uh, refill this out um, with the limits or if it's an address, um, just put the address down and uh, that way we can map it out to share with uh, the team and the committee um, and post online. So in the project description, we're also looking for uh, what is the existing infrastructure um, and what are the proposed changes. So uh, we are also asking for the engineer's plan status certification. This form is included in the supplement form packet. And again, it's all fillable form and uh, it's required for all projects. It is associated with points in the small government program, but not points in the DOPWIC evaluation. So, and then the two-year maintenance of effort form. This two-year maintenance of effort form is a requirement for the local transportation improvement project uh, program dollars. So we only require the two-year maintenance of effort form filled out for roads, bridges, uh, and culverts. So the last year, two years of maintenance. So um, moving along, so users. Uh, so uh, for, Oops, sorry about that. So for users, we're looking at how many people are using the infrastructure. So for roads, bridges, and culverts, we're looking for the ADT. And for the sewer, septic, water, and wastewater, uh, we're counting the number of households. Uh, you know, put your sources, report year, um, or count year, count source. Uh, make sure that, that the report year and count year is in the last couple of years. Um, don't give us a count year from 2010. Um, so users for road, bridge, and culvert uh, will accept TIMS data, the Transportation Information Management System from ODOT, or the um, uh, Cuyahoga County uh, manual counts. Um, if the municipality provides their own count, it must have the engineer's uh, stamp or seal uh, included on it. So. Um, and everything I'm telling you, uh, just want to remind you, is written up in greater detail in the applicant manual, which is posted on our website. So for the sewer, septic, water, and wastewater, again, we're looking at households. So we want to see uh, the map showing us exactly where the work is being done. There's a variety of ways of showing us this. Um, here in this top left map, we have the the um, home sewer treatment system locations. Um, and then, of course, you have the parcels. You can put the um, outline around it. Again, the more detail you can give, uh, the better um, it will be for the evaluation purposes. For the sewer, septic, water, and wastewater, we'll also look at indirect users. So who else is, is um, benefiting from this infrastructure? Um, and again, uh, the indirect users must have a clear map uh, indicating how uh, th they're benefiting, the indirect uh, users are benefiting from the infrastructure. So in here are two different really good examples. In the top left, you can see the project location um, is circled, and then the larger area has the big box around it. And then in this lower right, um, the Direct users have uh, the circles where the indirect have um, the X's. So, um, and then the points are based on the primary infrastructure. So water supply, wastewater, and stormwater have different thresholds than water, wastewater treatment plants in the road bridge and culverts. 
So, and again, the maps and drawings must be provided uh, clearly identifying and delineating the indirect users. Um, one thing I didn't mention is, and it's written up in the application, is the ADT uh, will be uh, multiplied by the average number in the car, so 2.1, to get the, the users, and the, the households will be uh, multiplied by 2.2, the, or I think it's 2.2, but yeah, it's, it'll be, um, and we'll do that, uh, those um, uh, multiplication and that evaluation. So all you have to do is give the ADT or the, the household number. So infrastructure age. So we'll need either the original construction year or the year of the last major improvement. We'll need the proof of age and uh, just a very, very brief description of the last major improvement. Um, and again, the, what is considered major and minor is written up in the manual. And the points are based on on that either construction year or the year of the last um, major improvement. And there is a lookup table if you're gonna be uh, pre-scoring your own projects um, before you submit. Infrastructure condition. Um, condition is based on the amount of deterioration within the defined project limits, uh, provide supporting evidence or rationale. Um, so, and your choices range from closed or not operating to new. Um, new will get zero points. Uh, closed or not operating will get the 45. That'll be the maximum um, for that, that category. So again, um, just clicking on it and not providing evidence is not gonna get you the amount of points that you are asking for. Um, the infrastructure, Bridges, we're looking for uh, general appraisals for bridges and culverts, um, a pavement condition rating or report for um, the road projects, and then uh, the condition documents for the water, wastewater, septic sewers, um, number of sewer lines, breaks, flooding events um, for septic systems, Cuyahoga County Board of Health ratings, uh, storm sewers, the number of sewer line breaks, inflow, inflow and infiltration events or flooding events, oops, uh, the number of NPDES violations and overall break rate or C factor. Um, so this year uh, we do spell out in the condition uh, section to describe the actual uh, condition of the pipes and indicate the frequency of water main breaks and provide um, the five-year break rate. And we do include the equation for that five-year break rate on page 15 of the manual. Uh, oh, there it is, the 45 points. Uh, and this will guide you on how to um, check your own, the description. If it's closed or not operating, the condition is unusable, dangerous, and unsafe. The primary components have failed. The infrastructure is not functioning at all. Uh, and we are looking also like if, if uh, the bridge is closed or posted weight limits, that kind of thing, include all of that. Um, imminent failure, the infrastructure is functioning at a seriously diminished capacity and imminent failure is anticipated. Again, um, the more documentation that you can show with reports, pictures um, and evidence, uh, the better. Uh, it is for uh, getting the scores that you're asking for. Health and safety. So again, uh, this is uh, the, uh, a 55 point uh, criteria. This is the, the driving factor that is really gonna drive the score. And it goes from continuous with severe factors, which is ongoing documented health and safety problems with multiple critical factors or the nature of the problem warrants additional consideration and the project will greatly reduce or eliminate the health and safety risks. So one thing to consider when you're filling out these applications is not just to show how dangerous it is, but also how the proposed project will um, reduce or eliminate those health and safety risks. Because if 
Uh, you're just repaving a road and um, not considering maybe uh, sight lines or, or curve or something like that, then some of these um, risks are still inherent in, in the project. So again, show us how you're gonna um, greatly reduce and eliminate these risks. So continuous severe, going down to preventative measures. Um, so again, if a, occasionally we'll receive applications that state that it's less expensive um, uh, to, to address the problem now. And so this will prevent further health and safety risks. However, um, this fund really is um, addressing the, the most critical health and safety concerns in the district. So if, if you're looking at this to, as a preventative measure, I would consider some other um, funding uh, routes. And uh, so what are we looking for in the um, supplement? You have more than just a checklist. There's um, space for you to provide uh, either data or where to find the data. Um, we're looking at uh, crashes and, and we're looking for crash rates per million vehicle miles traveled. If it's an intersection, um, the I think it's the million entering the, the um, intersection. Lane closures, level of service, load ratings, operating conditions, surface conditions, design conditions, access problems, and other. And again, as always, if you have more supporting documentation, um, include it. Uh, we um, would like, if you're citing crashes, um, definitely um, include the, the GCAT, the GIS crash analysis tool, rating with the traffic crash reports. Um, a lot of um, folks will have, uh, unfortunately, if they're including fat fatal crashes, please include the, the traffic crash report um, from that specific accident uh, or crash. I know that um, we get a lot of higher crash rates uh, we're not going to sift through all the traffic crash reports, but if there's a specific reason to include it, including a fatality, definitely include that, or, or we'll call you up and ask for that, um, but include it ahead of time. Uh, describe the safety deficiency and provide information that the health and safety issue will be reduced by the proposed project. So. Um, you know, we have $30 million. Uh, these are million dollar projects. Um, make sure that this um, narrative shows why you need the million dollars. It should be a million dollar write up. Um, the more information you can provide for us here, tell us where to look in the supporting documentation. Um, then, uh, excuse me, then let us know and, and um, that will help. Um, show us, you know, how to um, evaluate this. For sewer septic, wastewater, and water, uh, we're looking for some different supporting documentation, findings, orders, mandates, citing deficiencies or violations, flooding with structural and or property damage, undersized structures or structural breaks. And again, we already talked about the structural breaks in condition, but you want to look at how the the breaks are impacting the health and safety. So that's why it's still included there. Service capacity issues, um, combined overflows, illicit discharge, deficient fire flow, fire hazards, boil alerts, water quality issues, lead connections, other. Um, so uh, we get some uh, technical assistance from the Cleveland Water Department, the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District, um, in the Cuyahoga County Board of Health. So again, for water projects, uh, we will ask for the Cleveland Water Department Suburban Water Main Renewal Project solicitation sheet. Um, so uh, we recognize that not every community is a Cleveland Water Department community, but we'll still ask you to fill this out and they will evaluate it with the disclaimer that, you know, that they can't verify that information, that the, 
that your community is not under their purview, um, but it still helps us compare all the water uh, project uh, against one another. For the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District, um, the sewer map, any sewer reports, you can also um, include uh, your own community's reports for different call-ins. Uh, again, the more evidence you can provide for the health and safety or even the infrastructure condition, um, just include it. So, and then the Cuyahoga County Board of Health, they do um, sewage uh, treatment or HSTS evaluation forms. Um, and then this outfall database, um, and the reason, one of the reasons why I didn't blow this up um, bigger is because uh, this was from 2010 and we actually had to call the applicant and um, remind them that we need more recent data. This was not from a 2010 application or 2011 application. So again, make sure your data is relevant um, and the documentation that you provide can support the claims. If you're providing a, a whole safety report or sewer report that's 80 pages, you know, pick, find the pages that support your claims and direct us to look to them. We're not going to read through the whole 80 page um, document. Uh, so keep that in mind. And again, in the supplement where those checklists I just showed have more room to say see page seven in attachment page, whatever, um, the more information you can give us to find that information, um, that supporting information um, is helpful for us. And then once again, describe the safety deficiencies and provide information that the health and safety issue will be reduced by the proposed project. I cannot enforce that enough. It's not just that there's a health and safety problem, but how this project will um, reduce or eliminate that problem. So again, this is the highest scoring criteria, maximum of 55 points, and we provide uh, the, the description of how we'll evaluate it, and, and those points are allotted. And so, and all of these uh, points and descriptions are also included in the manual. So local match, um, points are determined by the percentage of the total estimated cost for the following ORC criteria, other project funding, um, which is uh, any ODOT money or, um, or, or federal money and or private contributions where the ability and effort to finance is any um, thing or that uh, the community is adding to that uh, project. Other project funding can also include your request for loan. So uh, as I was preparing for this uh, presentation, I realized that I am also still looking at the PDF. So we will definitely have to address this of where to find it on the um, WorksWise program for our description in the manual next year but we're looking at line I on page two in section 1.2 divided by line G. So that's both match sources are all the match sources um, and, and times 20%. Uh, percent. And then uh, same with the loan incentive. Um, first of all, and many of you this year um, got that email or call from Jennifer Klein um, if the DOPWIC awards all grant money and has loan money remaining, the DOPWIC will offer a loan in the, in the amount requested as grant. So um, we'll go through uh, the contingency list um, throughout the year um, or the program year. And again, if the application um, is not successful obtaining grant, will you consider a loan? So just check that off. There are no points. Um, so um, or maybe you applied for all loans, so that's not applicable. And again, the points for uh, applying for a loan is also on page two of the OPWC application PDF form, and it's line K divided by the total amount, which is line G, and that's times 10. So access to funds uh, to ensure an, an equitable distribution of funds, 
Applicants that have not received assistance in recent program years will receive points. Um, all bridge projects are exempt from access to funds. Um, so we provide uh, lookup tables on page 22 so you can um, self-score. And again, if this is, if it's a multi-community a project that was funded, we really only go by the applicant, the, um, the municipality that went into the agreement with a, a OPWC. So again, four points for um, projects that haven't been funded in uh, seven years or more, three points for projects that haven't been funded in five to six years, and uh, two points for projects that um, haven't been funded in three or four years. If you've been funded in the last two years, um, that's zero points. Community and economic development. So indicate whether the project is a community development project or an economic development project. It will only be one or the other. So you can get uh, three points for community development projects or three um, points for economic development projects. Um, and points will be awarded just in that one category. So community development projects are considered um, ones that will develop unutilized or un underutilized land and preserve or enhance a neighborhood or an existing commercial corridor, whereas the economic development projects um, will develop unutilized or underutilized land for private development that will create jobs and increase the value of the adjacent land. So again, in this section, uh, these are radio buttons. So you, if you press um, uh, that it's a community development project and try for an extra three points that aren't available to you and, and also try and um, click in here, it will erase the one that was up in community development. So that's what will happen there. So, and again, um, you can see for self-scoring, uh, in order to get the highest amount of points, the project is needed to redevelop the unutilized or underutilized parcels into a community asset or into uh, office, industrial, commercial, or manufacturing um, uh, asset for the community. And again, speculative development um, will get you zero. Regional collaboration. There is a slight change um, this year. This criteria is based on the um, local share contributions by other subdivisions in District 1. Points will be based on the information provided in the multi-jurisdictional projects table in the application supplement. So we're looking at what municipalities are um, you're working with, what other subdivisions you're working with, and the percentage of the projects. So applicants must provide um, the required co cooperative agreements indicating a subdivision's financial participation before February 15th, 2022. So you don't need the cooperative agreement at the September 16th deadline. Um, however, you do need a letter of intent um, that uh, that this is in the works to show that you're getting that. So, however, for the DOPWIC, when they meet on February 15th, if the cooperative agreements are not completed, they cannot recommend that project. So um, before February 15th, um, you need to get that cooperative agreement in. Can I jump in there, Allison? Sure. Just a quick point. Um, so yes, as Allison said, with the cooperative agreement, you don't need to have it by what the September date you need it by the 16th um you don't need it by September 16th you need it by January that what did you just February, say sorry. February 15th you need it by February 15th uh, but in the portal um it'll tell you that you need to upload this cooperative agreement so you can upload you know just a word document that says uh, this will be finalized on x date and you'll upload just that one document that says that we are working on this, we're working on getting the signatures. Um, or you can upload the document without the signatures either way um, and label it as cooperative agreement. So that way the system will let you submit the application because again, it will and require you to upload something 
and label it as a cooperative agreement. But then by the February date, you need to upload um, the new document with the signatures and it's fully executed. Right, and we need that letter of intent. So for district one, it's not just yeah. a blank piece of paper, it's a letter of intent. Um, yes. And in our application manual, that letter of intent um, needs uh, the signatures from, from both or two letters from both um, um, partners. Yes. In order to get the in order to um, get the points in the preliminary points system. So, um, and again, uh, we're looking at it's two points, um, but that can um, make the difference. Um, I, I show a road one side was repaved, one side wasn't. I was just assuming that maybe this was a municipal border. One thing I will say is we've had. Um, a, um, projects that were cooperative between two communities. However, one community was paying for it all. Um, and if that is the case, you will not get the um, that uh, collaborative uh, regional collaboration points. So it wasn't much that they were um, taking on. It may have been like a two, three percent. So um, but again, if you don't have that letter of intent, if you don't have the cooperative agreements, then we're not gonna recognize the collaboration. So economic health, um, the most current per capita income and the percentage of households below poverty level from the US Census Bureau American Community Survey, five-year estimates 2015 to 2019 will be used to calculate the economic health score. Just a couple of things the Cuyahoga County Department of Public Works will be awarded economic health points based on the owner of the asset. So the Department of Public Works does not own any of the roads. So if they are doing a road project, we will look up the economic health score of the municipality where it is in. However, the Cuyahoga County Department of Public Health, uh, Department of Public Works, um, they, own all the bridges so they will get their um the average the county average of the pci and uh, below poverty so a multi-subdivision project score in economic health will be based on the project percentage of the partnering communities as provided in the project description section and again it it's this um section right here so we'll look at the percentage and um and all the municipalities and put a weighted score together based on, on that. Uh, so and again, um, this shows you the breakdown of the per capita income and the percentage of households below poverty. And what I did not add in this is that there is a lookup table with all the communities, um, their per capita income, their percentage of households below poverty level, um, and that lookup table is on page 31. So you can, of course, um, continue your self scoring as you go through this. So coordinated infrastructure projects in order to ca capitalize on infrastructure investments, adopt a goal award points for projects that coordinate road, bridge and culvert improvements with the water, stormwater and our wastewater infrastructure, infrastructure improvements. So again, we're looking now at what components have been checked. Um, so uh, there's a maximum of four points for this category. Uh, even if you have five or, or all six, um, which you can't really do, because if you're doing a road project as your primary, don't mark it off as your secondary, because um, we won't count that. Um, but it will be determined based on the, the infrastructure that's checked, the description, and verified in the engineer's estimate. So, and then the, like I said, the topical word, um, one point for each secondary infrastructure component for a maximum of four points. And then the generation of user fees. Um, the proposed project will be reviewed to see if the revenue in the form of user fees is generated. It is determined by their very nature. Utility projects, treatment plants do indeed generate user fees for general revenue. 
Um, examples of the types of revenue generating facilities include wastewater treatment plants, water treatment plants, water transmission lines, and sanitary sewer interceptors. So um, the project type selected on page one of the OPWC application. So again, that's the OPWC definition. That's the highest financial um, contribution is determining um, the points in the generation of user fees. So, and again, uh, bridge, culvert, and road will get five points for this and water supply, wastewater, and stormwater will get zero. Um, so that's it. I don't see any questions in the chat about the supplement. Like I said, most of you are used to this. It's very um, similar, just maybe some tweaks here and there and how we ask for the information. So Jennifer, you wanna talk about the small government program? Yes, so yes, as I talked about briefly earlier, the small government program uh, comes off the top of the SKIP funding um, before the district allocations get distributed. Uh, so small government gets $20 million annually. Um, it is for local governments that have populations of 5,000 or less. Uh, again, you apply at the district level, you do not get funded at the district, and then the district chooses the top seven um, small government eligible projects to forward on to the small government competition. Uh, applicants are given this 30-day cure period, so you can edit your application to, since the Small Government Commission has its own separate methodology, different than the one Allison just went through, um, you'll have different scoring criteria and you can edit your application to best score to get funded at that level. The uh, Small Government Commission will meet on May 12th of 2022 to approve the slate of projects that get funded um, and agreements go out the same time as district agreements, July 1st, 2022. Great. So this is the Small Government Commission application checklist. So um, again, if you are a small government um, eligible municipality or village or township, uh, you should include this in your application. The topic will go through and review and, um, and score based um, on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of the 12 um, criteria. Ability and effort, um, that can change based on the cure period. Uh, so we do not score that. And the district priority really can only be assigned until after the, uh, the Dopwick Small Government Committee uh, approves them. So that's why we do not add those in. So, and again, this might not be exactly how they're scored at the small government level. Um, this is just to give us an idea of what will be most competitive down there. Because uh, at, at the state level in Columbus, um, I will say that we have been doing this uh, separate scoring uh, method for a couple of years now and, and district one has been very successful. I will say that the more districts are catching on, and this year was apparently very, very competitive. So um, just keep that in mind. And um, there is a small government application manual um, online, and I'm sure there's uh, more information on WorksWise as well. So um, you'll have to go directly to the the um, state Ohio Public Works, and that looks like an old link in this. Um, yeah, it is. It yeah, that. I'll I'll update this link before I post uh, the because I'll post the slideshow. Um, but for those watching the video at home, um, don't use the link it, in the video. So, and then here is a small government commission water and wastewater ability and effort supplemental. So this is not due at the time of um, the application due date for just the basic DOPWIC evaluation, but it will be due um, with the care period. So the DOPWIC project selection process. 
So as we've been saying, the applications are due on September 16th, 2021 uh, by 4.30 p.m. Again, um, synchronize your clock with the one on WorksWise because um, that's what we're going to be using to determine if it was submitted on time. And it, the DOPWIC staff review will begin uh, promptly on the 17th. And it includes a review of all application materials submitted. It includes site visits and uh, points are assigned and the projects will be ranked. So the preliminary project ranking will be published on the county planning uh, website uh, by November 29th, 2021. And then after the preliminary project ranking is posted, uh, there is time for appeals. So appeals are due on December 10th, 2021 by 4.30 p.m. The, this, uh, just an email, uh, is fine. Uh, DOPWIC staff reviews appeals and revises project score if needed, right? So um, again, definitely submit everything electronically um, and then the DOPWIC staff will get back together um, and review the appeals, uh, make recommendations whether to keep or change the score. Um, and then obviously if the project rankings are changed, those will be forwarded onto the DOPWIC. So again, the DOPWIC staff recommendation um, on appeals, that's all it is, is a recommendation, it's not final. The DOPWIC will hear the appeals um, and, um, at their final meeting. The final meeting this year has been extended um, to, to February. This should allow you to get all of the um, required legislative documentation um, that's the only thing that is not due on the September 16th deadline is the resolutions of support or the cooperative agreements. If there's something that has to go uh, through your council, needs three table readings, there's an August recess, uh, we, we get that. So again, um, that has to be in before Tuesday the 15th. So, and then uh, this, after the meeting um, and the project rankings are approved, the district one will submit the recommendations to OPWC. Um, the small government ranking will happen um, directly after that meeting. The subcommittee will review the small government rankings, determine small government projects. There are seven primary projects. Only the top five get uh, the priority points. Um, just so you know that when you're self-scoring at home and you submit this, will submit the small government projects to OPWC small government committee. And after we do that, OPWC will reach out to those applicants with the cure period information. Um, so Jen, I'll let you take over emergency. Yes. Uh, so yes, emergency funds, again, come off the top of the SKIP umbrella of funding. This year, uh, July 1st, we've got $12 million, which was very exciting because in the past, it's only been $3.5 million, which never left the full uh, fiscal year. So we have $12 million we just got on July 1st. Um, we've already approved, I think, about $5 million worth of funding. So we have about $7 million left over. Um, for the remainder of the year until next June. Um, if you have a possible emergency project, uh, these applications aren't going through the portal yet because we have, uh, it's a pre-application process where it's a one page Word document that is on our website that you will fill out with the, uh, what was the, what caused the incident, what was the date of the incident, how much is the emergency gonna cost, um, how many users does it affect? Maybe something else. Um, so you'll find that pre-application on our website and you'll email that to me. Um, and the decision on all emergencies is up to the director. Um, we do, it is a collaborative process with all the program reps and the director, uh, but the director gets the final yes or no say on whether to uh, approve any emergency pre-applications. Um, if you are approved, then you'll, well, uh, you can start work right away once you get that approval 
and then we'll work through to get your uh, agreement released. Um, but again, it's not for you know something that was delayed or you saw coming. It is for disasters that happened out of nowhere, a catastrophic event. Uh, there has to be some event that happened. Um, that's what we ask you in the pre-app. You know, what was the date of this incident? And yes, these are some examples of past emergencies. You know, if you have a pothole, that's not an emergency uh, program project. Um, it's, you know, the road's gone or you know, the road has slipped down the hill, um, things like that. If you have any further questions about emergencies, or if you're not sure whether to submit the pre-application, go ahead and email me. Um, pictures are always helpful with the pre-application to tell the story of what the problem is. What I will add is this is the first year in, I want to say two or three years, that the emergency funds hasn't been spent by the time we've had this applicant workshop. So yeah, it's um, very exciting that, that we that got increase, the increase. Was, was needed. So, mm -hmm. um, yes. so the next thing is the OPWC implementation also through WorksWise. Yes. Away, Jen. <laughs> yes. So uh, you get funded at that February meeting, they approve the slate and you're on that list. Uh, you will get your project agreement will be released July 1st of 2022 electronically through WorksWise. Uh, we just, for this July 1st of 2021, we did release project agreements uh, through WorksWise. So you get an, your CEO gets an email with a link to e-sign the project agreement. Um, if anyone has questions or comments or concerns about e-signing, let us know. We want everyone to be comfortable and answer any questions about e-signing. Uh, you can also click that link and download you know, before you e-sign, have the PDF of the uh, not fully executed agreement to go through um, whatever process you need to go through before uh, you have your CEO sign it. So you can have the paper and pass it around. And do whatever you normally do when you have a PDF of the agreement. Uh, to get it signed, uh, then we do need that e signed in the system and it'll automatically come up. And uh, once they do e sign it, all the project officials will get an email with a copy of the fully executed project agreement for your records. Um, and if your project includes a, a loan portion, the CFO will get an email to e sign the promissory note after the CEO signs the project agreement uh, and with the notification of disbursement method if you have a loan that you will just upload into WorksWise uh, when you're ready to submit your first disbursement request and that is if you plan on receiving uh, if you plan on getting reimbursed for your construction costs versus um, OPPC paying the vendor directly that's what the notification of disbursement method is about. And my email is there. I think my email is in a couple places in this PowerPoint, but feel free to reach out with questions. Uh, changes to project officials. So it's more important now than ever that we have accurate email addresses for all, all project officials, um, since that is how we will be communicating with in WorksWise. Um, all project officials will get email updates when the application is submitted when an agreement goes out, uh, when you have that fully executed agreement, when any disbursement is uh, submitted for a project, all the aspects of project going through WorksWise, you will get email updates about. So we need to make sure we have the right email address. If your CEO changes from the time that you submit the application um, to July 1st, when the project agreement is gonna go out, uh, just let me know and we'll I'll go in the system and update the project CEO and get the correct email address in there. So the agreement will be emailed to the correct person. Um, if July 1st comes and you forgot to let me know before July 1st, I can go in and change the email and then we send the agreement to the correct uh, project CEO. Uh, so after the project agreement is signed, it's fully executed. Once you sign it, you get a copy that is already signed by our director. Um, so you're free to proceed with construction of your project. Uh, we've gotten rid of the request to proceed years ago. Um, 
if we if you plan on having OPWC pay uh, your directly, we have a list of vendors that are in the state um, Oak system already. They're already set up to be paid. Um, that's on our website. At that link, check vendor status. You can check to see if they're on that site or if they're on that list. Um, if they're not on that list, that web page will uh, direct you how to to sign up to get paid in the Ohio Oaks system. Um, but if we're just going to be reimbursing you, you don't need to worry about that at all. Um, yeah, next slide. And then the dispersion of funds to be in WorksWise now to submit disbursement requests. Um, you'll upload the invoices that you always send. Um, if we're going to reimburse you, you upload the proof. Um, so you have to submit the invoice and proof that the invoice was paid in order to get reimbursed. Um, with disbursements, we expect to slowly transition. We don't expect, you know, August 5th when you have your login that you have to submit a disbursement request in the portal. Um, you can fill out your paper PDF of your dispersion request and email it to me. And when you do, once you do have your login and then you do email me a dispersion request, I will give a friendly reminder of, have you logged into the portal? Do you have questions about the portal? Um, have you tried to submit a dispersion in the portal? Um, and so it's, it'll be a transition to submitting the disbursements in the portal. Um, and we will have the training video up soon about submitting disbursements in the portal. It is very easy. It looks the same as the, um, the three-page document you're used to seeing. Um, you'll still upload the, the page two with the three signatures. You will upload that document along with your e invoices. Um, and so it should hopefully be a very easy transition to submitting disbursements rather than emailing them to me. You'll just submit them in the portal. Um, so yes, that's not gonna be a hard cutoff or deadline that you have to submit in the portal. We'll, I'll work with you and we'll get that done. Um, yeah, that's all I have. All right, just a reminder, the application materials were posted um, on Thursday, July 15th. They're on our website. Um, and again, if you haven't found them um, after this, uh, presentation. I can show you how to navigate through our website because we're getting close to the end. Um, the submittal deadline is Thursday, September 16th, 2021 by 4.30 p.m. Uh, that includes WorkWise and the PDF this year. I would do WorkWise first. Um, the preliminary project ranking will be released on Monday, November 29th when the project appeals uh, due February, December 10th, 2021. Um, and then we'll, we will post the um, appeal information on the website when we submit, send it out to the DOPWIC and the DOPWIC will meet on Tuesday, February 15th, 2022. Just a reminder, again, can't stress this enough and it's included in the policy manual that um, all the required documentation must be um, uh, included in the application materials in order for the DOPWIC to recommend for funding. A small government subcommittee meeting, uh, same thing, February 15, 2022. And the OPWC deadline to submit the district slate is Monday, February 28th, uh, 2022. So, and then of course the, the funds will be released on Wednesday, July 1st. So um, one thing to note, we are still doing this virtually. However, the committee is meeting in person now. So the meetings on February 15th will be here at the Cuyahoga County um, Headquarters, Administrative Headquarters. So also uh, these dates are subject to change and we'll be in touch with everybody um, with any changes, um, but uh, right now they usually get changed after the 16th. So that deadline remains the same. Uh, 
And uh, that's all we have. Um, if you have any questions and answers, you can turn on your cameras, you can use the chat feature. Um, so. Clear as mud. Mm -hmm. We're just that good. All right, well, if you're too embarrassed to ask your question because we're recording, um, you can always contact us. Um, our contact information um, is provided on the, on the last slide of this program. So email is always the best way to get a hold of us because um, the, the um, we're still, um, I'm still kind of once a week um, through September uh, in the office. Yeah, teleworking hybrid. And then, um, and, and so we can uh, follow up with you. Also, if you have questions, um, I think it's always best to include both of us. And I mean, maybe there's a question that I can't answer and then I'll have to send it to Jen anyway. Um, but then I'm always included on the answer and then I get to learn something new, especially it, it doesn't matter if it's works wise processes or the, your application uh, questions itself. Um, I would get in the habit of emailing both of us. So um, I guess that's it. No questions. Um, I will also change. Um, my number is 443-3727. I know the person at 3710 does not want your calls. So again, look for the updated um, slideshow uh, also posted on our website along with this video. So thank you for your time today. Uh, I'm going to stay on a little bit uh, longer in case you have questions. And um, that's it. Good luck. Be in touch. Call us with anything. Oh, one last thing is we, I will review your application um, prior to kind of see how it will score. If you're trying to self-score and you have questions, um, certainly you can reach out to me 